So guys, we've got another car in from BCA. Came off the back of the cinch truck as normal. So what we've got here is a 59 plate. I think this is a 2009, so it's a late 2009 Toyota Yaris 1.3 TR five door. Bought this off on that bolt buy of other cars. And um, first impressions, it's a nice gunmetal gray, which I think will polish up really nicely. I took the wheel trims off um, because they were all scratched up and I've got a set of alloys to go on this from a previous purchase. I think TR should have alloys anyway. Not sure why it hasn't. So we'll have a quick look around the bodywork. Corner of the bumper's good. Unusual for a Toyota, isn't it? <laughs> Other corner of the bumper's good. Wing mirror's good, no scratch in there. Down the side of the car. We're pretty straight all the way down there, guys. That's all going to polish up real nicely. Bumper fits well. No scratching on the corner of that bumper. No scratching on the corner of that bumper. No painting the bumpers, guys. Down this side of the car, we're straight bar this ding just here. Bit of a shallow ding, but I think a lot of that will polish out. I don't think I'll paint there because I don't want to be putting paint to another door and potentially wrecking it. And... Um, that wing wear, co wing wear cover is good as well. So body work wise, we're looking good. Now I've already had a look at the tires because I went nipped off and had a look at my alloys, which have got bad tires on. This has new tires on all round, pretty much. They're certainly not very old at all. So we're good on the tire side of things. We can put those onto the alloys. Right, let's have a little look inside. Door card's good. Seat's really clean. I mean, you could do it with a bit of a wet clean, but no tears or burns. Same in the rear. That's really good. Really good, actually. That's going to come up quite easily. The plastics can get scratched up, but actually in this one, they're really good as well, guys. All the buttons are good. There's no wear on them. Steering wheel's good. Just need to clean. I'm happy with that. Wow, look at the carpets. They're all really clean as well. That is tidy. That is tidy. All looks good in here, guys. Course, these have got quite a cool feature. I don't know if you've seen this on a Yaris before, but the seats actually slide forwards so you can increase your boot space if you want, as well as folding down. They actually slide forward, both sides do that. It's got that reassuring thunk in this class. That's probably the best sounding door you've got. A lot of other stuff sounds a lot more tinny. Well. Overall, guys, I'm really happy with the condition inside and out of that. That's really good. It does have you asking the question, what's wrong with it, of course. The last owner had it since 2013. It's got three owners on the books. So they've had it a while, the last person. They haven't shifted it on. It's only done 66,000 miles, which you know for a Toyota's good to go. Nice, clear digital dash. I see all these buttons are in good nick. We've got uh, auxiliary input down here. We've got the stop start, it's the stop start model. Which is good, got air con. Let's see how the engine sounds. Sounds bang on for the little 1.3. Got no fuel, I need to put some fuel in it. Stereo's coming on. How's the air con? Cold. Yeah, cold air con. Okay, so the engine sounds all right. The gadgets seem to work well enough. Let's have a quick look at the oil and that before we start hooning it round. It's 
so I normally have to cut the video because I can't find out where the uh, bonnet release is. You'd think I'd know by now doing all these cars. There it is. Right, so it's got dust on it, but nothing else obvious. Where's the bonnet stay? It's there, isn't it? So, looking at it, and we've got no leak from the rear main seal by the looks of it. That all looks nice and clean down there. What's the oil level like? We're flipping it. Look how clean that oil is, guys. Dip it again. That oil looks like it's brand new. That, so that's either a good thing or a bad thing. It's either we put new oil and see if that solved a problem or it's just been looked after. That oil's good and it's bang on where it should be. Coolant level's where it should be. That's all good. Nice bright orange. Mmm. That's tight. I get that a bit every now and then with these on the get some grips on that in a bit. So it's got a good amount of honest dirt on it, it's not overly cleaned, but I'm not seeing any oil leaks. Um yeah, all seems alright. It's got to have had a service very very recently. It's got to have had a service very recently, isn't it, with the colour of that oil. But everything down here looks good. So, we know it's safe to take for a spin, so let's take it for a spin. So, comment down below. Where are we with it now then? What do we think is going to be wrong? Because I think my money has to be on a gearbox issue now, doesn't it? Or an engine management light for a catalytic converter. We've had that issue before with these, haven't they? It takes three cycles before it comes back on again. Well, we have no engine management lights on. All the lights are going out, they should go out. I say that engine sounds sweet as a nut. Clutch. That's absolutely acceptable biting point, about the middle. Well, the gearbox is okay. Steering's okay, can't hear any horrible noises. Well, it's got me suspicious, guys. <laughs> it's got me suspicious because... Oh, let me put the seatbelt on. It's got me suspicious because I can't find a thing wrong with it so far. And you know that I drive enough cars to know if there's suspension problems, gearbox problems, clutch problems. I can normally tell just in this short distance. But everything seems absolutely fine, which is worrying me because the car's too clean, it's too tidy, it drives too well, and you just don't get that very often from BCA these days. You don't get any honest little cars. And I'm not saying that BCA are dishonest, I'm just saying the cars that go through the books, just you know, with the market being so tight at the moment. If they get as far as auction, you have to wonder why they weren't offered to somebody else before. Well, I don't want to take it on the road because that fuel's too low. So I'm going to get some fuel in it. And then I will run it home tonight and back. Just in case there's any of those little codes hiding in the car that uh, aren't going to pop up until a few more miles have been done. But as it seems so far, this seems to be a cracking little car. Relatively low owner for the year. Well, it is low owner for the year. Good condition all round. Drives well. With the alloys on it, it'll be the right spec. I do think someone's nicked them off this because um, it should be on a TR. Huh. So, 
six speed box on these, which is nice. Gets you that bit more economy out of them. Got electric front windows, electric mirrors. So the only thing it's really lacking is the rear electric windows. Can't remember offhand how long an MOT it's got on it, but it doesn't really matter because I'll stick a new MOT on it either. Um, just out of safety, in case someone bodged something on the last MOT. I don't think I've got any service paperwork on it, if I remember rightly. I've only got the key in the logbook. I don't think I've got any more paperwork around for it, unfortunately. It doesn't seem to have come with anything. Yeah, you've got a lock of wheel nuts there, so it did have alloys at some point. Have these ones got a hidey base? They haven't, have they? But they have got more cubby holes over there, haven't they, on these ones? Now, I wish people would put service bits in the cars. I find it hard to believe that any Toyota's not had it got a service history. Hmm. Well, the thing to do is, like I say, drive it home tonight and get it right up to temperature and see if it's got any overheating problems, anything like that. Uh, like I say, if any engine management, engine management lights pop up on the way back. But as it stands right now, I'm going to say this could be a rare win, guys. Now, obviously, we've got a few more cars to go through with you as well. We've got the Chevy Spark has come in. Um, we've got the Fiat 500 come in and we've got the Skodia Fabio, Fabio which I haven't covered with you yet either so we've got more cars in so there's going to be a few more of these videos where I just do quick little walk arounds of the sales cars that come in a few complaints I haven't been working on stuff recently well I have I can appreciate why you might think I haven't but I have I know Moors are doing a lot of my mechanical stuff now but I'm still busy busy like I say I've done you a big long video on the Ford Fusion I said I'd try and do it all in one for you. Keep a bit of a giveaway now. You're seeing some of the paint before it's been polished off. But uh, there's one big long video coming out of that. It's taken me a little while, that one. It doesn't make business sense to do what I've done to that in terms of the amount of prep I've done on it. But um, you'll get to see that soon. So I have been, have been working away on that. Uh, I've got the Volvo in to get working on the Volvo so that we can get that up and running because I think that's a good bit of retail stock that should be done next because it's almost ready to go. Done a bit more playing around with the MGB. But obviously, my first thing is walk around, show you the cars as they come in and then I'll show you as we start to work on them because they all need something and Moors won't be doing all of it. I will be doing some of it myself. The Nissan Note is sold today. So 3495 my asking price. And that's what I've got for it. I'm throwing in a rear rubber boot cover for it because they could take dogs in. So I've ordered up one of those from, cost me about 40 quid, I think, to do that. And a young lady came by to see the um, red Seat Ibiza. But that isn't actually in, in back in stock yet. Unfortunately, it wasn't here when she came here. So I'm going to do a walk around video when I get it back from Moors after they've done that cam belt. And obviously check that that's resolved the problems we had with that. A subscriber has got first dibs on the Seed, which a lot of you seem to really like this car. I've got a lot of positive comments about this car. So we're going to get that down, find out what it needs for its MOT. We're going to do those rear discs and pads and then have a play with a couple of things on the clutch. Most of you commented and said, um, well, a huge amount of you commented and said you've had these and you all had low clutches on them. I've seen a huge amount of information on people changing the clutches out and getting no benefit from that at all. So there's a couple of other things to do first on it to try out. I want to hold the pedal down and leave it overnight and see if the arm comes back on the clutch, see if I've got a leak in the fluid. But what reading up a lot, there is a um, a clutch damper in the system, little uh, cylinder with a rubber diaphragm inside it that is supposed to take up sort of movement within the clutch as and when you do it. And apparently the diaphragms go in that and allow the fluid to pass by it, which gives you a low pedal and you blank it off and that can improve things as well as just swapping out to a, a master cylinder, new master cylinder. So we will um, we'll try those things and see if we can improve that clutch pedal. But the conversation I've had with the, uh, with the subscribers that we're gonna try our best to do that, but it may well be that the pedal ends up being where it is. 
and then uh, he'll decide whether he's happy with that or not but i'm not surprised it's a really nice looking car that anyway like i say i haven't got quite done as much as i wanted it saturday today I haven't got anywhere near as much done as i wanted to get done saturdays aren't normally my busiest days for sales believe it or not uh, i had lots of plans of getting everything done on the ford fusion but i haven't been able to so i think it's about time to pack up and go home before i get told off so guys back with the yaris because um what we know with yaris is, is that with the toyota stuff is that if someone clears the code it can take three or four runs before you actually see the code come back up again as it does with quite a number of cars so i've been driving it for uh, i drove it home and driving it back again now I only put a can a jerry can of what well, jerry can a small plastic can of fuel in it um because it had none in it at all and <laughs> it hasn't moved at all so it, this is it at idle quiet as you like so let's go for a little spin and just give my feedback on it guys slip through the BCA net because it actually <laughs> seems to run and drive well since the Suzuki Swift Sport I haven't had anything that I've been able to hop in and um, drive without going mm, that little need that needs a bit or this needs a bit or whatever or something more fundamental than that this is the first one and I know a lot of you're gonna shout well you know what do you expect it's a Toyota I've had Yaris's before through the auctions the last two I had one had a bad catalytic converter and the other one had a bad clutch so you do get them coming to you with things that have gone wrong um, but this one it yeah it slipped through the net somehow because it actually is a car that is entirely usable as it is right now there's nothing really needs doing so what do we do with it we'll uh, get it in for an MOT I, I should say actually that I'm I'm saying it now because I feel confident enough to say that after having driven it as much as I have. Um, but yeah, we'll get it in for MOT, get a fresh MOT on it. I think it's got a really long MOT on it anyway, but I'd hate to miss something that then caused somebody a problem later on, um, or there was a safety issue that I was uh, unaware of that happened since the MOT. So we'll get it in, get a fresh MOT on it. Um, I'm not sure if there's a point in servicing. The oil in it is absolutely immaculate. So it's clearly just been done, so I'm not sure if there's any real point in me servicing it. I'm happy to throw in a free service in a year's time or so, but um, yeah, it's, the, the oil is immaculate in it, so it just seems absolutely pointless doing it right now. I might check what the air filter looks like and see if I engage from that how recently the service was done and make a decision from there. Um, I'm going to, like I say, stick those alloys on it, I think, swap the tyres over to those alloys, um, because there's a TR and it should have alloys, I think, as a TR. So we'll stick those on it and it'll just sort of lift it up a little bit. Um, other than that, it's just give it one of my makeovers, you know, machine polish it and clean the engine bay. The interior is going to need very, very little. It's going to need a basic little hoover out and a wipe over with a, with a bit of uh, the old dash shine and all that. So uh, could be that it's a winner, guys. Could be that it's a winner. But as you'll see in front of the videos, for every one, well, for every one like this, there's normally two that have the issues that need to be done. So if you're going to be buying from BCA or setting up a car business, whatever, and you're buying these types of cars from auction, either be very handy at doing the work yourself or have a very friendly garage like I've got with Moors. Um, when I'm paying for people to outsource to do the work, I do make a lower margin, but when you've got 20 cars sitting around, you can't do it all yourself. <laughs> Shout out to David there. Um, but yeah, so uh, you make a low margin if you have to put the work out to somebody else. But it can help speed wise get as many cars ready as, as you can in one go. So, it does need some washer fluid and it needs some wiper blade. We found a fault with it, guys. It needs some washer fluid and it needs some wiper blade. But that's it for this video, guys. Uh, we've got a couple more to go through that have turned up from BCA and then we should be into some videos of getting the actual work done and selling the cars so you can see that side of things. So as always, thanks for watching. Catch you again soon.